I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Today is October 29th, 2021, and I'm not here live today, but I'm still gonna do a little tutorial for you, and you can chat with me in the comment box, and I can answer any questions for you. But this week, we wanted to wrap up the So Happy So Along that we did with Lori Holt. So for this quilt, what you need is you need the Spelling Bee book and this little free pattern. So this is a free pattern, and in this pattern is the free setting for the entire top and the star. So even if you haven't sewn this, but you collect Lori Holt books, you should print this out so that you have a six inch and 12 inch version, and you'll just have one additional block that you can add to all of her books. So I sewed this in the Stitch Collection by Lori Holt, and I made it exactly like our sample that we showed earlier. And on the back, I just, I did pay attention to the direction of the people and the words so that it was directional in the same direction as the front. And I had Gina Tell from Thread Graffiti Quilt It. And what I wanna teach today is how I put buttons on. And I keep all of my Lori Holt buttons just in a jar. Now for this, she just wants you to use her 5 8 of an inch buttons for here and here. We're gonna put five buttons here and two buttons here. Now, the thing with doing buttons is you can do it however you want. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, I'm, not, I'm not an expert at this. This is just kind of what I've come up with over the years. This is probably be my layout, but I'm gonna put that aside real quick. I'm gonna start with these two. And I'm going to just center them and sew that on. So I'll do one at a time. The first thing I do when I'm sewing buttons or anything kind of by hand, I'm gonna roll this up and kind of get it out of the way so that I'm just working with a smaller area. So when you put these buttons on, you can use any kind of floss you want. We can use embroidery floss or RF floss or RF fill floss. Actually, this is just 50 weight and you can either just eyeball it or what I like to do, this is a two inch square is you can just draw a line at like the one inch, like one inch in and one inch in, just do like a little, just a little line and you can get it out with heat later if you can see through. I doubt you'll be able to see through. So the most important thing is to have a needle that is sharp enough to go through all the layers, but the eye be big enough to hold the embroidery floss. And so, I would just find whatever needle you have in your sewing room that is thick that you can thread the needle with. So these are um, Bowen 3 slash 9 and they're sharp needles. And I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take one of the, one of the ones kind of from the middle. And you can see they have a nice big eye. So it says one dash two longest patchwork betweens quilting. So the betweens needles. And I'm going to use, let's see, I think I'll use embroidery floss. And you just pull the floss from the number side. And I'm just gonna pull two strands out. And um, I would say with buttons, just find whatever you have in your house. Don't go spend extra money on anything. I mean, any of Lori's buttons that are about five eighths of an inch will work. I wouldn't go out and buy special needles or anything. So we're gonna see if we can get all four of these layers through here. And we did. Okay, so what I do is I have two layers here of embroidery floss. You could always do one layer or one strand. I'm going to thread my needle. So now I have a loop here. There's like a little loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come to the left. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna come a little bit to the left of my drawn line. So that is like just a mark at one inch and I'll just go a little bit to the side of it. Come up and just go through the left side of the button and then go through the right side. And then just look at the distance between right here and then try to do it there. So just guess. I'm gonna go back down. And 
and oh it looks nice and flat that's lucky so I'm gonna come back over here and put the needle in the loop and you want it to be you know you can leave it just like this or you can make it a little bit more taut so I would pull your um, you know pull with this hand and then I would try to go back down that same hole from the back and go through again and because I did two strands and a loop that actually made four strands which makes it where I don't have to go through the I don't have to do it so many times and I see a little okay that was just a little and just go back down now I think that's plenty now you could go through you could do four times you can do three times you can do whatever but what I'm gonna do on the back I'm gonna try to hide the thread underneath. Now I'm no expert at this, I've only done it a couple of times. So what I would do is, is uh, make the needle like just a little, like a little, I don't know how to describe that, but just a little piece. Pull the needle, put it in there, you're making a knot on the back. So you pull this through, that's gonna make a knot. And then what you can do is put the needle right back down in there where you were. Come out the other side. It's going to be hard because this needle is pretty thick. And you can actually pop that knot in the back. Pull real hard. It's going to pop the knot and then there you go. And there you go. So we'll do it a couple more times. Now on these two, I tried to make these two match. Um, so we'll grab two more strands and we'll kind of do the same thing. But there's honestly, like, I would love for all of you guys who are in chat, put comments in there. What needle do you use? What thread do you use? I am no expert on this. I, um, I just think this is something that you do after you quilt, after it's back from the long arm quilter, and it's just giving it the final touch. I will say that um, we went ahead and put in the embroidery stitch here for the needle and then quilted on top of it, which is great because it actually, when Gina Tell from Thread Graffiti quilted it, it kind of secured it. So um, that was nice. So just thread your needle. When I do the other ones, I'm going to try a trick that I haven't done in a while and we'll see if um, it helps. Now what you could do is you could have dragged the thread from this needle to this, or this button to this button. Um, you could have easily done that. And since the thread is white, it matches the back. Now you could also do brown thread on this one, on a yellow button, use yellow thread. I'm just gonna use white because I think it'll look good. So again, using those guidelines that I made with my friction pin, just come up from the back. And I can't wait to see some of you guys' tips on buttons. And this sew along has been so fun. I can't wait to have this one in my sewing room. So I just go back down. And I try not to get this to twist. Like I try not to get this all twisted. So keep it there. And then on the back, just go through the loop. It looks like there's a little bit of excess thread that I don't like. It's like not perfectly even right there, so it looks good on the front though, so I'm gonna leave it. Rethread it, and I, I'm trying to use the embroidery thread just because I think it gives it a thicker look. And it, I don't have to, like if you, if you did this like a bunch of, to get that many strands there, you'd have to go through a bunch of times. And I'm pulling over here. I'm pulling this taut to get it exactly where I want it. And then here, again, go through, create a knot, and just run it through. Pull it, it pulled the knot slightly under, and then just chop this off. Now that's if you want it really pretty. Now you could have connected the lines if you wanted to. 
But now I'm gonna show you a tip here, and this is something I learned from Cecile at Just Another Button Company and Rachel also. So what we're gonna do here, these are also 5 eighths of an inch, and I just picked five different colors. And these buttons are just, you know, one stitch, and then these you would do an X. But a couple of things you could do here. So you want them to be uniform across. So I'm going to first draw a line. I'm going to do that line again. So that's one inch. I'm going to draw a half inch across. And it's a friction pin, so it'll disappear. So when I'm assembling it, I kind of want to stay on that line about, about there. But what you could do is you could tape these down. So let's see. So that's kind of the color I want, but I obviously need them spread out a little bit more. So let's see. I don't think I'm going to be so OCD that I um, uh, measure it, which is kind of what I do sometimes. Um, and then this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do, we're going to try this. Now, I don't know if it's going to work. It might be a complete fail. We're going to tape these down, and we're going to try to... First, I'm going to get them where I want them, and then I'm going to tape them. See, I'm so OCD. I can't stop. That looks pretty even. So I'm going to tape them one at a time. And then I'm going to go from the right to the left, sewing it down. And again, I learned this from just another button company. I'm sure it's on one of their videos. And of course, they don't stay in place perfectly, but they stay enough. Well, that one's, as I say that, that one doesn't want to... So let me know in the comments if you've ever taped buttons down. I feel like this tape is kind of not staying, so I'm probably going to have tape everywhere. Okay. So they're at least like somewhat in the spot we want them to be. My tape is not cooperating. So what I'm going to do is pull some more thread. Now this time I want it to be a little bit longer because I've got to go all the way across. So again, I'm going to pull two strands out. And this is what I meant about you could use gray thread, yellow thread, pink thread, blue thread, red thread, so that the thread, you don't see it as much. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create the loop. So I've got the loop over here, and I've got the ends here. When I thread my needle, what I like to do is fold it over, pinch it in my finger, and then do that. So I'm going to start on the right side, and I'm going to go to the left. And I'm going to do it that way because I'm right-handed. So I'm going to make an X. So I'm going to see if that looks about right. That might be a little too far over. Yeah, see, I'm a little too far. I'm not far enough over, so I'll go a little bit to the left of that. And using that line, you're making an X over it, so you'll just go a little bit below it. And then I'm going to make an X, go across, and I'm just eyeballing what I think will look good. Um, Okay, go to the back, pull it through the loop. Now, of course, you could start with a knot. I just prefer the loop method. Ooh, my yellow button, he doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, I'm going to just move him out of the way for a second. Okay, now I'm going to cross the X. And I kind of just, I just eyeball it. I mean, um, I do pull pretty taut though on the front and you could leave it like that or you could do one more so I'll go back through and do one more and when I do that I try to go in the same hole I started with so that I don't have a mess on the front so I try to 
go right back where I was. And again, these needles are called betweens needles. So they're sharp enough to go through, but they are, um, the eye is big enough. But again, I wouldn't buy anything special. I would just use what you have at home. Okay, so then I've got this one down. And that looks pretty good. So I go back my little yellow button. And I'm going to take the tape off at this point before because I don't want my, my um, tape to get on my needle. So I think I could go a little bit that way. It's kind of, to be honest, I don't love doing buttons like this because I'm so like hard on myself that I will redo it a million times. Um, don't ask me how long it took to do the cross stitch buttons because... Let's see. So I think again, that needs to go a little bit further over, but it's gonna be harder now because I've already gone through. So we'll see if we can pull this back from the back. I might not be able to, because there's so many strands. And I remember at my grandma's house, she always had these like big, they look like big wheels. Like they were, they were glass, they were like these plastic, con oh, look what I did. That's not gonna work. I don't know what that is. That's not, definitely not gonna work. Um, they were like these little containers. They were like this big circular and they had little compartments on the inside and I used to play with her buttons. I think I used to drive her crazy. In fact, I know I did. She had all boys, she had five boys. So when she, she didn't know what to do with us growing with girls when, when she had grandchildren, she she um she didn't know what to do with us. She thought we were brats because there was only two of us. Everybody else was always boys. Okay, so let's see. I just made it a tiny bit shorter, and then I'm gonna cross. So let me know what questions you guys have, and we will answer them in the chat. Um, this weekend, Emma has a big dance convention. I'm going to be in San Antonio. And I'm hoping the hotel is decent. Let's see. So, and as I go, I'm, I'm really pulling. I really want it to be taught. So I'm happy with, I wasn't sure if using two strands was gonna be too much, but I think it's pretty good. I actually really like it. So that's, that's pretty good. And again, these are all just an, this is from just an assortment of different bun buttons. From Lori. And then you guys can comment and let me know like where are you going to display this? Like, are you gonna put this in your sewing room or where are you gonna put this in your house? And so I'm just gonna do the last three. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna just take the tape off here. It's gonna be harder because I did that thing, but. I'm gonna move these out of the way for a second and hope that this still works. Let's see. Okay, that looks about right. You could also, another thing you could have done is you could have started with the button in the center and then moved to the left and the right. Um, and that would have made sure that your center was right in the center. So I could look and see if I'm in the center. So this is five, so two and a half, so I'm right in the center. So luckily I got there. But that's what I did on the cross stitch is I started in the center and then moved out. But on here, I didn't, I didn't really want to have to go this way and then back this way figured I could get it right. I love these buttons, they're so cute. 
Um, and if you want to see my assortment of buttons, because I have so many, we have some videos on cross stitch organization, and we have some on, and that's on our floss tube channel. Okay, so my threading of the needle is. Okay, and I'm going to do one more, and then we just have two more buttons. So let me know in the chat what you guys are going to be doing this weekend. I'm probably driving to San Antonio as we speak. And um, the funny thing is, Emma told me, I have six dances. And I looked at her and I said, the last time you had six dances, you were like five. She usually has 11. So I think she's relieved. I guess they're not taking, like, some of the kids can't go, so... They cut some of the dances and I was like yay we can go to bed and the best thing about this one is they do the they do the awards on Sunday so you don't have to stay up Saturday night okay and on this fabric there's like a little it's like a grid and so I'm kind of looking at the grid when I place my needle in figuring out where I think it should be which makes it kind of nice that it's a grid and I keep um, So it looks like I might have a little bit more space here between these, but in the end, I don't think anybody will notice. about it now what I could have done is I could have made little markings across and marked them every inch and that actually would have kind of helped me be a little bit they could have been a little bit more not every inch it would have been five divided by six I don't know it would have been something like that but I could have done it that way but I think it looks good and then oops on the back I'm gonna do that same thing where I just do a little knot. I create a knot. And then put it right there and it'll pop under. And you'll hear it do a little pop. So guys, I hope all of you guys have a great weekend. I hope all of you have made this so happy quilt. Now all I have to do is iron on the back and my lines will come out. And I will see you guys next Friday. Have a great weekend.